Hey everyone, so we're gonna do something a little different in this video, and what we're gonna do is use a mini PC to set up a home server. So I really have three goals for this mini PC. The first is that I wanna run Docker on it. The second is that I wanna use Jellyfin and I want it to work with hardware acceleration. And the third is that I want it to run Home Assistant. So that's really the only goal I have for this device. And what I'm gonna be using is a GMK Tech Nuckbox G3. Uh, it only has eight gigs of memory. I'm probably gonna to have to upgrade that to at least 16, but we're not gonna worry about that in this video. So we're gonna go through the entire setup process for this minus Home Assistant, which I'll get to in a little bit, but we're gonna go through the whole setup process for this, and we're gonna start with the basics here. So the first thing that I had to select was an operating system. Now, I'm gonna cut right to the chase. I selected Proxmox. The reason I selected Proxmox is because I like to take backups of my devices on a nightly basis, and the easiest way that I could do that is using Proxmox. So on a nightly basis, I will run a backup process automatically that will back up these systems and services to my Synology NAS, and if I ever have to restore back to them, I can do it back to yesterday's version. Now, this has saved me countless times, especially with things like Home Assistant, because there have been updates that have broken things, and it was easier at the time to restore from a backup than it was to try and figure out exactly what went wrong. So for that reason, I selected Proxmox. Everything that I'm gonna do in this video can be done if you install something like Ubuntu Server or Debian. So I'm not suggesting that you have to do it this way, but this is the way I am going to do it. Now, from a service perspective, I'm gonna set up in this video, Docker and Jellyfin in an LXC container for each. Each of them will have two gigs of memory, so I'll have more than enough with the eight gigs I have right now but each of them will have two gigs of memory and we'll get to why I'm not gonna be running them in an LXC container together once we look at the setup process. So I wanna jump right into this and up to this point, the only thing I did in this Proxmox installation is I went in and I disabled the enterprise repositories, which they'll be enabled by default so you can just select them and disable them. And then I added the no subscription repository, which you can do this way, select add. And finally, I just ran updates on the system so as long as you do that, you will be up to the point that I'm at now. The first thing we're gonna do is configure a Docker LXC container. Now we're gonna be using an LXC container because from a resource usage perspective, this is gonna be a lot less than a full-blown virtual machine. So it's basically gonna share the system resources. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is download the Ubuntu 2204 template. Now I used to use Debian, but I found that Ubuntu runs a little better. So you can use Debian if you want. But as soon as that's done, we're gonna go in and we are gonna create a container. Now this first container, I'm just gonna call it Docker and then I'm gonna give it a password. Make sure this unprivileged container stays selected. You do not wanna run Docker in an LXC container with a privileged container. Next, we are going to select that Ubuntu template. We're gonna give this 20 gigs of storage space. I'll give it two cores and two gigs of memory. Finally, in the network section, I'm just gonna select DHCP, but you can enter a static IP address if you want. I'd suggest doing it on your DHCP server, but up to you. Everything else can stay as default, and we're gonna select finish. And then at that point, our Docker LXC container will be configured. So the only other thing we have to do is inside of the options, we have to turn on key CTL so that Docker can run inside of a container. So this will have all the permissions that we need. So once you did everything, you can start up the container and it should be extremely fast, but then you log in and we are here. So the first thing we're gonna do here is update the system as well. So now that the updates are done, I'm gonna install Docker. So the commands I'm gonna be running are official Docker commands uh, from their documentation. I have a written tutorial on how to configure Docker inside of Proxmox. It has the same commands you can use either. So we're basically just gonna run each of these commands one by one. All right, so as soon as you run all of these commands, the final command that we have to run is this, and this is gonna install Docker. So now that that's done, the only other thing I'm gonna do is install Portainer so I have a way to manage Docker. Now you don't have to do this, but I find it easier to actually manage Docker using Portainer than anything else. So that's done. Finally, I'm just gonna install the net tools package and then I'm gonna find out what this IP is. So it's 56 and then I'm gonna to navigate to Portainer and Portainer should be set up. So at that point, I will create a user account and now we have Docker and Portainer configured and it's currently running inside of Proxmox. So this is where I will go in and I'm gonna configure all of my uh, containers. If you want a video to see what containers I run, just leave a comment, I'm happy to do that. But now this is done. 
So only thing I'd mention here, you really want to set up a static IP address for your Docker installation. So make sure you do it on your DHCP server or you can change it in the network configuration, but you generally want this to stay the same. So that is done. Now my next requirement is to run a Jellyfin server inside of Proxmox as well, but I want to use hardware transcoding. So the device that I'm using, and you don't have to use this device, it has an N100 processor. The N100 processor can be used with QuickSync. So I want to run an LXC container with Jellyfin and I want to pass the integrated graphics directly from the Proxmox host to our Jellyfin LXC container. I know it gets a little confusing, but it'll make sense in a minute here. Now, the reason you have to do this separately is because I'm gonna be using NFS. And what you can see here is that we have an unprivileged container. However, inside of these features here, you cannot use NFS or SMB with a unprivileged container. You can only do it with a privileged container. You do not wanna run Docker with a privileged container. You're giving root access to your Proxmox server. You don't wanna do that. So keep it separate. In my opinion, this is best but keep it separate. And then we're gonna configure a secondary LXC container, which is only gonna be used for Jellyfin. So what we're gonna do is basically run through the exact same thing. The only difference is this is gonna be privileged. So I basically set up the exact same settings I had before and the LXC container is going to be created at that point. So there are gonna be a lot of steps here, a lot of commands. I will do my best to break down exactly what each of these mean. But the first thing that we're gonna do is install VA info. And ultimately what this does is if we run this VA info command, you will see that our GPU drivers are not installed. It's not actually pulling anything. So that leads us to our next step, which we have to install the GPU driver. So without the GPU drivers, you're not gonna be able to get hardware transcoding working. Now I have all of these commands in a written tutorial that explains how to configure Jellyfin on a Proxmox server with hardware transcoding. I'll leave that in the description. You can get all these commands there. So we're gonna run three commands which are going to install our GPU drivers. And to be clear, I am only certain that these GPU drivers work with the N100 processor. If you have a different processor, I can't guarantee these are gonna work. There were three commands there in the written instructions. If we run VA info again, we have received a response, which ultimately means that our GPU drivers have been installed successfully and we were able to pull some information from it. So now the next step is going to be actually modifying this configuration file here and adding a few parameters, which is basically just gonna pass the GPU from our host to the container. So we're gonna run this command here to edit this configuration file, but what you're gonna see here is I have 101.conf. 101 is the LXC containers ID for Jellyfin. So as soon as I do that, we're gonna get the default configuration file for our Jellyfin container. Now I'm gonna add these three lines at the bottom here. These are gonna be what passes this, which is our GPU, directly to this container. So I'm gonna write this, these changes, and then we are done with that step. Now we're done with the actual host changes at this point and we can start up our container and we're gonna have to update it. Now with the container started and logged into, we are gonna update the system. All right, so with the actual updates installed, we're gonna install VA info again. And as soon as that's installed, if we run that command, there we go. We have our GPU, which is passed from our Proxmox host to our LXC container. So that's good. Now the final thing we have to do is actually install Jellyfin. All right, so what we're gonna do is we are actually gonna install Jellyfin using a script. There's a manual way of doing this, but it's a lot easier to use the script. In order to use the script, we have to install curl. The script will use curl. So with curl installed, this command will install Jellyfin. Now, as soon as you get this message, you can select enter here. But what this is gonna do is this is going to install Jellyfin. All right, so once it's active and running, we know it's installed. What we're actually gonna do now is shut this down because inside of these options here, I forgot to turn on NFS. So I'm gonna be using NFS to pass my media to this Jellyfin server. You don't have to use NFS, you can use SMB. I find NFS to be a little easier. So I am going to enable that and then I'm gonna start this container back up and then I'm gonna log in. What I'm gonna do now is actually pass my media to it. So on my Synology NAS in my media folder, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna create NFS permissions for this media folder only. So what we have to do is we have to get the IP address of this Jellyfin server, 10.2.0.50. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grant permission to 10.2.0.50, all these other settings. We can really set this as read only. We're not gonna be editing the media. 
Uh, we can save these permissions, but as soon as you save those permissions, what we can do here is we can then mount that media to a folder inside of our LXE container running Jellyfin. So the first thing that we're gonna do is make a directory for our media, and then we're going to CD into it. So as you can see, nothing is there. Next, we are gonna install the NFS package that we will need, and as soon as that's installed, we can mount the actual shared folder on our Synology NAS to this media folder. All right, so after the NFS package is installed, we can actually mount our Synology NAS's media folder to the media folder on our device. It's this command, you have to make sure NFS is configured on this container and you have to ensure that the NFS permissions are granted on your NAS. As soon as you do that, if you navigate to that folder and you check what is inside of it, you should have your media. So. The final thing we have to do here is actually ensure that this mounts every time we boot up the system. So in order to do that, we have to modify our fstab file, and it's gonna be a pretty basic setup here. So basically what I have here is this is my NAS, the IP address of my NAS, the volume, and the folder. This is the folder on this LXC container. This is NFS, that's what we're using, and then default is zero, zero. Everything in between here can be tabs. And as soon as you do that, we can reboot this system. And as soon as the system comes back up and we log in, we should be able to go to that folder. And yes, our data is there. So that is now configured. The final step here is going to be actually configuring Jellyfin. So once again, the IP address is 10.2.0.50. So we're gonna to go to that IP address and port 8096, and we're gonna get brought to the Jellyfin setup page. So I'm gonna quickly run through this, and I'm gonna just add in a test media library here, but all of this can be modified based on whatever you want. And you're gonna to have to add multiple libraries based on whatever type of media you have. But all of this can stay as default. You wanna ensure that remote connections is enabled. I would disable uh, UPnP here, I would not use that. But once you select finish and you log in, you should see all of your media. Um, all right, so the final thing that I wanna do here is actually configure hardware acceleration and show you that it's working. So inside of the settings here, you can select the person icon, you can select dashboard, and then what you will do is select playback, and we are gonna turn on QuickSync, and we're gonna turn it on for our options here. And then at the bottom here, we're gonna save. So now that hardware transcoding is enabled, what we're gonna do is we're gonna play a video. And if we select this playback info here, what you'll see is that we're actually not transcoding. So we're direct playing at this point, and that ultimately means that it's playing directly off the device, it doesn't have to actually transcode it. But if I come in here and I change this to 480p, for example, if you give it a second here on the left-hand side, you're gonna see that it starts to transcode. As soon as it starts to transcode, as you can see, what it's actually doing is it's using the GPU rather than the CPU. So transcoding will work with the CPU, it'll be more efficient with the GPU. This is using GPU hardware transcoding, which is on our processor. It's the integrated graphics from our processor. So now that that's done, the only thing I wanna show you is I talked earlier about automated backups. I back up all of my virtual machines and containers directly to my Synology NAS. The way that I do that is by selecting the data center and then I add my Synology NAS as storage. Now I use it as NFS storage. I basically follow the same process we followed for the media folder. But if you grant NFS permissions the same way we did for the media server, I have a tutorial for this exact thing as well that I will leave in the description. Uh, as soon as you select that and you select where the data should go, you can select exactly what this uh, storage can be used for. I generally select everything and then you can add it. Now, as soon as you add it on the left-hand side, you're gonna see it. But what this allows you to do is actually back up virtual machines and containers directly to your NAS. So if you select this Synology NAS storage in the top right, you can back up the actual container directly to it. So as soon as I do that, what you'll see is it'll run through this process. And if you give it a few seconds now, the backup will complete. So if you ever have to restore, you can then select a previous backup and select restore and then you will restore it. Now if you want, you can also configure automated backups. So in the data center and in the backup tab, you can select add and then what you have to do is select the storage and then you can select when it's gonna back up and you can select all. And then ultimately this will just run every single day based on whatever actual retention policy you set. And now in the background, without you realizing, every single night your virtual machines and your containers will back up 
directly to your Synology NAS or whatever NFS storage you have, and you'll be able to restore from them if you ever have problems. This has saved me so many times because I have not wanted to go through and actually try and figure out what broke with whatever application update was installed. All I had to do was go in, restore from yesterday's backup, and then I could go at a later time, reinstall that update, and try and figure out exactly what went wrong. So that is the long and short of this. You don't have to use this hardware. You don't even have to use these services if you don't want to. But this is exactly what I'll be using this device for. If you want to see the next step, which would be installing Home Assistant on Proxmox, leave a comment, happy to create a video on that. But if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. And if you made it this far, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time.